Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. In episode 246, I'm reflecting on the 10th anniversary of BrightPath, and I have 10 things to share with you that I've learned along this decade-long journey that the team and I have been on. Uh, and then I have a bonus 11th uh, at the very end. The first is starting a business required me to learn something I didn't know how to do, and that was learning how to sell. I knew how to sell a project inside of a company because that's what I had done for 21 years. Uh, expanded, or getting money for expense and capital, software projects and hardware projects and other initiatives across the different roles that I held. Doing that internally was easy to me. It was second nature to me. Learning how to sell to another business and understanding the processes that went on in the sales cycle around procurement Man, I had only ever been on the buying end, and now I'm on the end of selling. And even though I had a lot of experience in business continuity and crisis management, and I had a lot of experience in big projects from the corporate side of things, the necessity of mastering sales techniques and learning how to convey the value of the services that we were offering and the products that we were offering at BrightPath um, really emerged as a critical skill that I had to learn. And honestly, 10 years later, I'm still learning how to do this in a way that fits with my personality and the way that I choose to operate in a very forthright and straightforward way. Number two is just the, what I would describe as the underestimation of resilience. I found that a lot of organizations just did not prioritize resilience efforts as they should, and they often underestimated the potential impact of a disruption on their organization, on their operations, on their systems, on their reputation. And if they did understand that impact, they often saw that impact in a very small silo rather than seeing the broader interconnected impact to the organization across those different areas. The third thing is C-suite visibility that I just did not see. I was very surprised to see how many Resilience leaders in organizations really struggled to gain credibility and therefore visibility with the C-suite. And it hindered, I think, their ability to influence strategic decisions. It certainly in, um, impacted c the COVID response at organizations. And I think it was a huge missed opportunity for the resilience uh, field because a lot of executives found resilience leaders lacking. They, they found that they didn't have the strategic mindset and capability and business alignment that they were really looking for. Number four is just how the global threat landscape has changed. Uh, there's been a rapid evolution of threats on a global scale, uh, cyber threats, geopolitical unrest, unrest political unrest, uh, pan the pandemic, of course. Um, all of these underscore the necessity for a more adaptive approach to resilience. It emphasizes the need for investment in resilience that a lot of organizations just didn't do. Uh, number five is the importance of soft skills. I think there's a ton of effort um, in this field placed on learning new things about resilience, so new techniques for business continuity, new ways of managing a crisis, uh, adopting lessons learned from a crisis or a exercise. And we often miss the importance, the critical role that soft skills play, communication, empathy, leadership. And these are even more uh, apparent, I think, in a crisis because those crisis management soft skills and you're dealing when you're dealing with these complex organizational dynamics all matter. Number six, client education uh, is key. I have been surprised about how much I've needed to educate clients and potential clients about the importance and benefits of resilience around business continuity planning and proactive crisis management. And I think this is a lot more uh, significant than I originally expected. I thought most companies knew they should invest in this. And it was a surprise to me to learn that they didn't know and they didn't have the background necessary to do that. Number seven is just the value of networking, that building a robust network with industry leaders, with uh, like-minded individuals uh, across different organizations has been important to me, not just for business development, but for staying ab abreast of best practices and emerging trends and developments that have happened. 
Number eight is the integration of technology. Um, technology has become core to every bit of work that everyone does all of the time. Um, the integration of technology in the work that organizations do, but also the integration of technology in managing and mitigating crises, data analytics, crisis simulation software, all of these have emerged as more complex and more essential than ever before. Number nine has been the impact of regulation. And although the United States has seen less of this than other countries, navigating a very changing and, and uh, uh, a regulatory environment that's in flux, um, particularly in industries like healthcare and finance in the U.S., has presented more challenges and opportunities than I think I ever saw. And then number 10 is that um, resilience is a strategic advantage. Um, I think understanding and helping our clients understand that organizational resilience can serve as a strategic advantage. It contributes to a company's competitive edge, to your sustainability, to your reputation, and become can become a central theme uh, in your consultations. So these are 10 things I've learned um, over the 10-year history of BrightPath. Our 10th anniversary was just last week. Uh, just a couple days ago by the time you'll be hearing this podcast episode. And there's, I, I'll add one bonus uh, uh, thing I've learned that I, I said I would have, and that is uh, the value of specialization over generalization. Um, I, we as a team have decided to really, over Bright Past history, to deepen our resilience expertise and deepen our offerings in resilience rather than trying to be a jack of all trades, rather than trying to be all things to all people. Um, we think this has helped us reinforce our position as a leader in the field. We want to be the place that people come to for business continuity and crisis management and crisis communications work. Specializing has helped us offer really unmatched expertise, we think, and tailor solutions that precisely meet the complex needs of our clients and that enhances our credibility and our effectiveness. So these are 10 things and one bonus item uh, that I've learned over the past decade of Bright Past History. Um, whether, uh, on a personal note, whether you've been a fan of the podcast or you watch our videos on YouTube or you read our articles uh, or perhaps you're even one of our clients or consider becoming a client, I wanna thank all of you for your trust and support over the past decade as we've built Bright Path into the company that we are today. We could not have done any of this without you. Uh, we look forward to the next decade and I look forward to sharing with you our lessons, uh, 20 lessons from 20 years of Bright Path in 2034. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.